Ah, it's you guys again. Hey, uh, welcome to Willie's American Guitars video series. It's uh, summer, all the flowers are coming up, and we're into that summertime. It's, it's great up here in Minnesota. We get about five days of bad skating, and uh, so we're happy to see it. Anyway, I have an interesting guitar. You might have seen this in a previous video sitting on my side and I had some people asking about it. It's a 1959 ES 225. So they made the ES 125 but the 225 had a cutaway and neck binding and then the logo was done in pearl. So the 225 is kind of an unsung hero amongst vintage guitars. First off, being a 59, you get this really choice neck. It's big, but not too big. The 58s tend to be a little bigger. But you, that's the 59s, the first year they had the larger frets. And so that's a big thing for Gibson collectors. That's kind of the start of the golden era when it comes to Gibson electrics. <laughs> As Les Paul, Sunburst Les Pauls, bursts climb in value and fame and notoriety, that neck shape kind of becomes a thing with people on other models. And if you can take two different, two of the same exact model, one's a 59 and one's not, the 59 will generally be of more interest to guys like you. Of course, you know that. The guitar is kind of neat just because it has this rather simple bridge. And once the strings are on, it's very stable. Um, Buddy Holly's guitar player famously played one of these. Uh, and then P90s are becoming a higher interest to people. I, today, am playing through this 1962 Super Amp. And the Super Amplifier is interesting because it's 210s, 35 watts, um, lightweight, solid pine cabinet. But this is a six preamp version. So this doesn't have tremolo, it has actually vibrato. And allow me to illuminate. I'm gonna bring up the intensity so you guys can hear it. Cool, huh? Um, the intensity, of course, you can turn it down so it's not quite as seasicky, but it really is an interesting tone. It's pretty slow, you can speed that up. It is foot switchable, so you can turn it off. This amp also has the master presence control, and the master presence control is largely misunderstood. These early master presence controls are negative feedback loops, and to keep it simple, it takes unused energy that goes to the speaker and reinserts it into the system. And what you get with the master presence is a lot more brightness. Here's it all the way up. And here's it all the way down. When you're playing at lower volumes, maybe you might want to get that a little bit of a goose and you'll get more. You get more crunch out of it. Um, likewise, if you're way loud, you may want to take off some of the high end with that master presence. And that's an expensive option to put on. Most manufacturers put presence on their amps, but it's basically a capacitor that's above the treble control. Again, master presence is kind of misunderstood, and once you get used to it, it's kind of a useful tool. It varies according to the volume onto the amplifier. Now, speaking of volume, bring down the bass of it. Super Amp with pitch changing vibrato and a 1959 
ES-225, and this guitar is in super clean condition. They're always walnut back and sides. This has the original individual tuners on it. That's another thing about the 225. Um, it has larger frets, a bigger neck, two pickups, pickup selector. It has the original pick guard, the original pick guard assembly. The previous customer on this, uh, who I think was the original owner of this, or maybe the second owner. Okay, we just had this set up with light flat wounds. I want to throw that in. Flat wounds, sometimes people come in, they're like, this has flat wounds on it? And yet, it's kind of a growing concern. Flat wound strings are more money, they last longer, they're easier on your frets, and there's that certain, that certain distinct tone to the flat wounds that's a little more vintage. -y. It's not the choice of rock and rollers that really want to cut through, but it is an interesting guitar. And this. type of guitar that you can sit and play on the lap and enjoy the guitar without plugging it in or plug it in and enjoy the guitar but this isn't a great interesting guitar to look at investing in because as bursts and from this time period all the other guitars from this time period are really much dramatically higher than the 225 and I dare say if Eric Clapton had played one of these these would have gone through the roof already so it seems to us like a really great vintage value and um, there you go that is the end of the video and thanks for watching